Appreciate the Lord. Amen. I, I, anytime I can stand and preach the word of truth, I, I thank God for that. And uh, grateful to be saved. Amen. 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 Boy, it's good to be a child of God. Yes, sir. Especially in the days we live in. Yes, sir. I can't imagine today. I can't imagine not being saved. Yeah. I, I can't imagine anybody in their right mind not, wouldn't want to be saved. Right. The, the problem is they just don't know. They need to be. Right. Amen. But thank God, I, I, yeah. I, I'm grateful for that day the Lord showed me yeah. that I need to be saved. Yeah. Man, hell's an awful place. Yeah. And uh, you know what's amazing? It's amazing uh, the people that never read their Bible tell you what the Bible says. Yeah. Yeah. First ones. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. Well, thank God. I'm glad I found out what the Bible says about me. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. I want you to look with me, please. Uh, anything else we need to do before we get going here? All right. And uh, we're going to be as quick as we can. Uh, got a lot of ground to cover. Would you get your Bibles out? Keep it open. We're going to be moving along. And uh, for this part of the service, thank you, brother. And uh, look with me, please, at Daniel chapter 2. This is where we begin. Daniel chapter number two, and uh, want to, uh, I guess, uh, teach you something from the Word of God and make a statement, uh, because this is where I stand. I believe it's where your pastor stands, and I think it's where you ought to stand. Amen? Yeah. And, uh, well, what's the subject, preacher? Well, you'll find out in a minute. <laughs> Amen? Uh, Daniel chapter number two, and uh, we're going to look at several passages here. Uh, uh, for time's sake, I'm going to uh, uh, sometimes just give you the scripture. You write that down and read it when you get home. Uh, we'll not have time to, to exhaust it and go through all the scriptures, but uh, at least try to give you the, the, the main points uh, of it. Uh, <clears throat> I think I think one of the things that that hurts people today, especially uh, uh, people that are supposed to read their Bibles, is uh, we have too much uh, knowledge about angels. Right, right. Amen. Knowledge that's not correct. Yeah, that's true. Uh, angels do not have wings. Right, yeah, right. Amen. There there are no female angels, right. except in one place in the Word of God that. Uh, where they're demons and not angels. Uh, anyway, that and uh, let me just uh, go on the record. I don't, I don't, I don't want to spend a lot of time with that. But uh, I want you just for a little while this morning, especially if you're new, forget everything you know about angels. Amen. And let's just see what the Bible says. All that matters is what God says. Uh, if, if what you believe doesn't line up with what God says, might be a good time just to switch over. And, uh, you know, I've always believed this, that anybody that manufactures anything, uh, creates anything, makes anything, uh, they always generally give you an instruction manual. And uh, nobody knows more about uh, that than the one that created it, yeah, right. amen, and that wrote the book on it, yeah, right. amen, yeah. and God wrote the book on life, yeah, and uh, so it would be good this morning just to uh, forget about all these other, uh, listen, I don't want you to believe it because I said it, That's right. don't you believe it because your pastor said it, That's right. That's you right. find out what God says, That's, right. That's all that really matters, That's he is the final authority, amen. Well, Daniel chapter number two, and here, you know, we have this image, uh, uh, you know, in the book of Daniel that uh, this king, Nebuchadnezzar, had uh, created, had uh, uh, basically four major parts. Uh, the gold was Babylon, uh, represented Babylon. Silver represented Medes and Persians. Uh, brass, the Greeks. And then iron and clay uh, was a divided Roman Empire. Amen. Look at Daniel chapter 2. And look with me, please, 
At, well, let's see. Look at verse number 39. The Bible says in Daniel chapter 2, verse number 39, And after thee shall arise another kingdom inferior to thee, and another third kingdom of brass, which shall bear rule over all the earth. And the fourth kingdom shall be strong as iron, for as much as iron breaketh in pieces, and subdueth all things, and as iron that breaketh all these, uh, shall it break in pieces and bruise. And whereas thou sawest the feet and toes, a part of potter's clay and part of iron, uh, the kingdom shall be divided, but there shall be in it of the strength of the iron, for as much as thou sawest the iron mixed with miry clay. So, so I want you to really think about that as we go along here. You have two, uh, two substances here. You have iron, uh, and it's mixed with clay. It's mixed, the Bible said. Amen. Mixed with miry clay. The Bible says in verse 42, and as the toes of the feet were part of iron and part of clay, so the kingdom shall be partly strong and partly broken. Verse 43, please. And whereas thou sawest iron mixed. That's a very important word. You might even underline, if you don't mind doing that, in the word of God, <clears throat> with miry clay. They shall, and here's the, here's the most important I want to get across this morning. I want you to see this word, what is it? Mingle, amen? And uh, they shall mingle themselves with the seed <clears throat> of men. Yeah, right, right. Yep. Well, we, just, we just went from talking about iron and clay. Now we're talking about people. Right. Amen. So whatever, whatever this day is, they're mingling with men. Right. The seed of men. Look at it again in verse 43. And whereas thou sawest iron mixed with miry clay, <clears throat> they shall mingle themselves with the seed of men. Watch it. But they shall not cleave one to another, even as iron is not mixed with clay. There's some things that just don't go together. Yeah, right. Amen. No matter how you stir it, yeah. how you heat it, whatever you do, you can't get them to mix, God said. Right. Amen. But, he's, but he's, he's telling you here, I'm not talking about uh, minerals. I'm talking about uh, whatever this they is, whatever is represented by iron. Now, you and I, the seeds of men, we represent clay. Yeah, right, right. Amen? Right. That's dust. God created man from the dust of the ground, right. breathed in his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. So you take that dust, mix it with a little moisture, right. and you're going to have clay. Right. Amen. Right. Everybody all right so far? Right. And so we got, here's the, here's the thing I want you to see today. Now get a hold of this. We've got, we've got uh, uh, they. We're going to find out in just a minute who the they are. Mm -hmm. But whoever they are, they, they're represented by iron. And they're trying to mix with the seeds of men. Everybody all right? I seen an advertisement, I think, I, I believe I'm right in saying this. Been been a few years ago. You know, you know, you ever you ever watch these commercials where they have uh, uh, they got somebody for you to date. Just about any kind of, no matter where you come from, cowboy. You know, farmersonly.com. Uh, but I seen one, I believe, I'm right, I believe I saw, I believe this is the name of it. I, I think it said, listen to me, it said, <clears throat> Christian Mingles. 
<laughs> How about that? Christian mingles. It was a dating site. In other words, if you a Christian, now, of course, we know in the world that could mean Catholic or, yeah. you know, right. Robert Schuller or right. uh, whatever. But, but they're mixing, right? Yeah. They're trying to mix, but they don't mix. Yeah, right. That's why God told you, be not unequally yoked, give right. unbelievers. Right. Right. Amen? Right. Uh, you say, why, preacher? Because they don't mix. Right. Uh, and yet people are still, they're bent on trying to prove God wrong. Amen. And so what do they do? They don't mix. They mingle. <laughs> Amen. We're going to find out what that's all about too. Amen. So the seed of men and the they. The they are only, only the feet and toes that are mixed. Amen. Take your Bible and look with me please at Psalms 106. Psalms 106. Quickly. Psalms 106. And look with me, please, at verse number 28. <clears throat> In uh, Psalms 106, verse number 28, the Bible says, They joined themselves also unto Baal Peor and ate the, the sacrifices of the dead. Amen. Now, he, he's talking about the Canaanites here and the Hebrews. Watch it, verse 29. Thus they provoked him to anger with their inventions and the plague break in upon them. Then stood up Phinehas and executed judgment, and so the plague was stayed. Uh, uh, let's see here. I want to make sure I don't go find the right verse I'm looking for. And, and that was counted unto him for righteousness and all generations forevermore. Uh, they, they angered him also at the waters of strife. Now he's talking about Israel, amen, so that it went till with Moses for their sakes. It went ill with Moses for their sakes uh, because they provoked his spirit so that he spake unadvisedly with his lips. They did not destroy the nations concerning whom the Lord commanded them. In other words, God told Israel, you go into this land, uh, you wipe them out. Right. Amen. God promised them, I'm going to go ahead of you and I'm going to wipe them out. I'm going to send hornets and run them out. Uh, they're going to be, you're going to see their backside running. Amen. Then he says in verse 35, watch verse 35, but were what? Mingled. Mingled among the heathen and learned their works. Amen. You know, you see that? They were mingled with the heathens. He's talking about his people. He's talking about the apple of his eye. Mingled with the heathens. Now watch. The heathen didn't learn Hebrews' works. That's right. That's right. Yeah. What happened? They were influenced by the heathen. Yeah, right. Amen. Right. Well, I'm going, I'll marry them and change them after I get married, preacher. Is that right? How's that working out for you? Yeah. Everybody all right? Yeah. Look, uh, uh, let's see, where was I at here? Uh, verse number 35 says, but were mingled among the heathen and learned their works. Verse 36, watch, and they served their idols, which were a snare unto them. Say, how'd they get that far, preacher? Look at my good eye, mingling. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Now, now, you understand, I realize we're in the company of a lot of different age groups here. I'm trying to be very politically correct, unpolitically speaking. <laughs> that, uh, 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 that word mingle is another word for uh, they, they knew one another. You know, you, you understand what I'm saying? The uh, Bible talks about, you know, a man marrying a woman uh, in the Bible, but he had, had not known her. Uh, I, I'm trying to be very nice about this, but they mingled. Yeah. Amen. That don't mean that don't mean they were sitting on a cloud playing harps and drums together. Yeah. That means they were doing things, uh, sexually speaking, they shouldn't be doing. Right. Everybody, all right with that? All right. So 
So uh, stay with me now. I want you to I want you to get a hold of this. So they mingled. Listen, folks. They mingled just like those in Daniel. Everybody with me? We just read in Daniel. Remember? Everybody all right? All right. Now look. Take your Bible to Ezra chapter nine. Ezra chapter number nine. Everybody okay? I, 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 I just want to be a help to you. Look, look with me, please. Ezra chapter 9. In Ezra chapter 9, and look at verse number 1. Ezra chapter 9 and, and verse number 1. The Bible says, Now when these things were done, uh, the princes came to me, saying, The people of Israel and the priests and the Levites have not separated themselves from the people of the lands, doing according to their abominations. There they go again. Every time they mingle, listen, Solomon mingled with many strange women. And guess what it did? It led his heart away from God to serve the God, other gods, Ashtaroth. And, uh, are you with me? And so, and so you never going to benefit from, from hooking up with somebody that's not saved if you're a child of God. The Bible says, uh, uh, again, in verse 1, Now when these things were done, the princes came to me, saying, The people of Israel and the priests and the Levites have not separated themselves from the people of lands, doing according to their abominations, even of the Canaanites and the Hittites and the Perizzites and Jebusites and Ammonites and the Moabites and the Egyptians and the Amorites. Verse 2. For they have taken of their daughters for themselves and for their sons so that the holy seed have, what's the word? Mingled themselves with the people of those lands Yea, the hand of the princes and rulers have been chief in this trespass. He said the preachers was in on it. Amen? On what? Mingling. Uh, godly with ungodly. See that thing? Uh, uh, maybe, maybe you don't quite understand. Look at verse number 10. The Bible says, And now, O oh our God, what shall we say after this? For we have forsaken thy commandments, which thou hast commanded by the servants and the prophets, saying, The land under which ye go to possess it, it is an unclean land with filthiness. Of the people of the lands with their abominations, which have filled it from one end to another with their uncleanness. And you're going to mingle with them? Everybody all right? Yeah. Everybody with me so far? You see what's going on here? Right. God said, hey, hey, you be careful who you mingle with. Right. Amen. Matter of fact, if you're a child of God and you're, and you're married, there's only one person you ought to be mingling with. Right. Right. Everybody okay? Yeah. Hold your head back and swallow it. It'll go down. Yeah. All right? Look, look with me now. Watch. I want you to see some things here quickly. So they, 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 they these actually married. They mingled together. Amen. Uh, what, what happened? It, it resulted in unholy offspring. Right. The the Bible defines mingling as <clears throat> sexual activity between those who do not belong together. Amen. A mingling of those who should not mingle. Everybody all right? Anybody have any trouble understanding what we're talking about right now? All right? Now, take your Bible. I want you to look at Jude. Jude, what chapter? Everybody okay? Jude chapter... Uh, look at Jude chapter 1. And look with me, please, at verse number 8. Jude chapter 1, or Jude verse 8, whichever way you want to do is fine. Amen? Now, now watch, I want you to see something here. 
And in verse number eight, the Bible says, likewise also these filthy dreamers defile the flesh, despise dominion, and speak evil of dignities. Amen? Now you see that? So, here, so here's, here's what he's doing. Now watch. He's describing what's going on in his day. Jews' day. Now look at verse 7. Even as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities about them in like manner, giving themselves over to fornication and going after strange flesh, are set forth for an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. You, you see that right there? You think, you think... You honestly believe that America's going to get away with anything? He's describing to you Sodom and Gomorrah. Jude said, matter of fact, by the way, Jude is God's last warning to the church before Revelation. Amen? And Jude said, in my day, they're mingling. Holy with unholy. And he, then he says, it's just like they did in Sodom and Gomorrah. Wait a minute, look at verse number six. The Bible says in verse number six, and the what? Angels, which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation. He hath reserved in everlasting chains under darkness unto the judgment of that great day. Uh, so you see what he's doing? He said, Jude said, you know how it is in my day? It's just like it was in Sodom and Gomorrah, and, and they're just like the angels that fell. Right. Just like them. Right. How were they all? What was the common denominator? How were they all the same? They all mingled mm -hmm. with, with those that they weren't supposed to mingle. Right. Everybody all right? right. All right, so... Uh, uh, I need to move right along. Uh, anyway, uh, uh, if you understand, everybody all right so far? Amen. You understand what we're doing? You understand where we're at? Okay, now take your Bible. Look at Job chapter 2. In Job chapter number 2, and let's, let's nail this thing down here just for a minute. In... Uh, in, in Job chapter number 2, now I watch this, Job chapter 2, look at verse number 1. The Bible says, again, there was a day when the sons of God, now, now, look, if you don't mind highlighting or underlining, underline sons of God, amen, came to present themselves before the Lord. And Satan came also among them to present himself before the Lord. Amen. Now, they, they did the same thing. Look, look, go back, look at chapter one while you're here. Look at verse six. Bible says, now there was a day when the sons of God, see it, came to present themselves before the Lord. And Satan came also among them. So, so look, here, here, think about it like this. Uh, uh, Satan's been kicked out, right? And with him, about a third of the angels. Everybody all right? And, and, and they rebelled against God. Satan rose up against God. Satan wanted to be God. Right. Amen? You know the story, and God kicked him out. And now these, these, uh, these angels are with him. Now, but here's the thing. Now, uh, ever so often, God requires them to come before him like probation. Anybody ever been out of jail on probation? You don't have to raise your hand. <laughs> and, and like once a month, you have to call a probation officer. Amen. Or you have to go see the, the magistrate or the probation officer. That's what they're doing here. Satan, Satan got to come answer to God. 
No matter how much you think he's got power and how great he is, he's always got an answer to God. Amen. Amen. And when he comes to answer to God, the sons of God, uh, listen, folks, the sons of God, God, I'm going to prove to you they're angels. Everybody all right? The sons of God had to come with Satan and present himself, uh, you know, when God required him. Everybody all right? Amen. Now, having said that, watch. Look at Job 38. Job chapter 38. Everybody okay? Job chapter number 38. Now, uh, Job chapter 38. Look with me, please, at verse number 4. Job chapter 38. God is questioning Job. You know, Job is complaining and griping and moaning and you know, this ain't right, if I could just get this, if I could do that. And so God says, God's now speaking to Job. Now watch what he says, verse 4. Where was thou when I laid the foundations of the earth? See that? Yep. Declare if thou hast understanding. You're so smart, Job. Tell me how it worked out. <laughs> Amen. Verse 5 says, who hath laid the measures thereof, if thou knowest? Did you, were you there, Job? Did you, did you see when I created all this stuff? See that? Or who has stretched the line upon it? God said, I dropped a plumb line. I built this thing. Right, right. Amen. Verse 6 says, whereupon are the foundations thereof fastened? Who's holding it together, Job? Everybody all right? Yeah. Or who laid the cornerstone thereof? Amen. Look at verse 7. Watch. What's that first word? When. You know what that word when does? It connects those together, puts, puts whatever he says in verse 7 right in the middle of those verses we just read. Everybody? Where is it? In the, in the creation. Everybody all right? All right, look at verse 7. When the morning stars sang together, and all the sons of God shouted for joy. Right. Now, you get, get, get the picture, folks. Now, listen now. Have, have, I, have, have we taken anything out of context? We're just letting God say what he says, right? right. God says, God says, Joe, where were you when I laid the foundations? The whole subject is God creating this world, right. heaven and earth, right? right? And God says, where were you at, Job, when I did this? Where were you at when I did that? Uh, and, and by the way, while I was creating this, while I was making that, while I was doing it, the stars were singing. Amen. Now listen, write this down. Revelation chapter 1, verse 20, where your Bible says stars are angels. Scripture with Scripture, line upon line. Everybody all right? So, so God said in the beginning, when I created everything, the stars were singing. Stars are what? Angels. He said the, the angels were singing. I, as a matter of fact, all the sons of God. Everybody, you see that? So what he's telling you is stars are angels, comma, and sons of God. Now, did I take it out of context? Is that what it says? Everybody all right? All right, so, so we know then we know then that angels, whoever they are, we know two things about them. We know, number one, they're stars. Number two, we know they're sons of God. But li listen, can I help you? Can I tell you something? You know what the Bible says? The Bible said when Jesus was born in Bethlehem, and they laid him in a manger. You know what the Bible says? Uh, a couple years later, wise men came. Yes, Remember that? Yeah. You know what they said? They said, for we have seen his star in the east, and are come to worship him. Now, now listen to me, folks. Can I help you? 
the sun that you see in the sky right now is not the biggest star in the universe. There's stars out there much bigger than the sun. But they're so far away, they look smaller. Everybody all right? But, but let's, just, let's just do this. Let's just find the smallest one and set it over a barn in Bethlehem. It would disintegrate the whole earth. You see how stupid that is. So what is that star that led those wise men? It's an angel. You know how you know how else you can know that? Because the Bible said they followed it until he came and stood over the place where the young child lay. You know, it's amazing. It's amazing what you can do just believing God and following Scripture. Isn't that right? Amen. All right. So, so now we know the angel, the star, sons of God. Amen. Uh, I mean, this, I mean, this is amazing to me. Now, now, wait a minute. Hold your place. L- look at Luke chapter three. Everybody okay? Luke chapter three. I'm hurrying. In Luke chapter number 3, and let's see. Luke chapter 3, look at verse 23. Luke chapter 3, verse 23. The Bible says, everybody there? And Jesus himself began to be about 30 years of age, being as it was supposed the son of Joseph, which was the son of Heli. All right? Uh, 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 now, now, look with me, please, at verse number 35. Bible says, which was the son of Sarah, which was the son of Regu, uh, which was the son of Felix, which was the son of Heber, which was the son of Selah, which was the son of Canaan, which was the son of Arphaxen, which was the son of Sam, which was the son of Noah, which was the son of Lamech, which was the son of uh, Methuselah, which was the son of Enoch, which was the son of Jared, which was the son of Melil, which was the son of Canaan, which was the son of Enos, which was the son of Seth, which was the son of Adam, 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 which was... The Son of God. Everybody see that? Well, listen to me. Can I tell you something about Adam? He's no angel. All right? So what are you saying, preacher? I'm saying, I'm, I'm, I'm showing you everybody in the Bible that's the Son of God. So we know that, number one, angels are sons of God. We proved that, right? Number two, we know that Adam, you know, Adam and Eve, Adam was a son of God. Anybody want to argue with that? It says it right there. We just read it. Everybody all right? All right. Wait a minute now. There's another one. The Bible says in John 1.12, but as many as received him, To them gave he the power to become the sons of God. Now, who's he talking about? Us. What do you mean, preacher? I'm talking about anybody that's born again, washed in the blood of Jesus Christ, saved by the grace of God. Everybody all right? Are called the sons of God. We're sons of God because of salvation. And Adam was a son of God. Amen. Everybody okay? But, But Adam, watch, he was a son of God because he was created in the image of God. Right? Just Adam. Everybody all right? But Adam lost his image. 
Everybody with me? So he, he was a son of God because he was created by God that said, let us make man in our image and in our likeness. Everybody okay? All right. Now, so Adam is called the son of God. Uh, now watch this. Look at, look at Genesis chapter 5, please. Everybody okay? Making you work this morning. You're going to get your weekly Bible reading in. <laughs> Genesis chapter 5. In Genesis chapter number 5, look with me, please. Everybody there? Look at verse 1. The Bible says, this is the book of the generations of who? Adam. See that? In the day that God created man, in the likeness of God made he what? Him. Him, just him. Look at verse 2. Male and female created he them and blessed them and called their name Adam. In the day when they were created. You know the story? God, God opened up, put him asleep, opened him up, took a, took a rib out and made a woman because she came from the womb of a man. Amen? And been nothing but trouble ever since. Uh, verse 3, watch it. Bible says, verse 3, and Adam lived in 130 years and he begat a son, watch, in his own image. After his image, excuse me, in his own likeness, after his image, watch, and called his name Seth. No question. Was Seth born in the image of God? No. When Adam sinned, he lost that image. So everybody that's born from Adam on is not born in the image of God, but in the image of man, Adam. Amen. And the only way you can get that image back, but as many as received him, to them gave he the power to become the sons of God. And when you get saved, you get your image back that you lost in Adam. Everybody okay? I mean, I know I'm giving you a good bit of stuff, but I believe you can handle it. Amen? Everybody okay? All right, so we see that Seth was not born in the image of God. He was born in the image of his daddy. Okay, uh, so we see three groups, all right? Angels are sons of God, right? Adam is a son of God, and you and I, if you're saved, you're sons of God. Everybody okay with that? Amen? All right, so uh, Adam was a created son of God. You became a son of God at salvation, all right? Now... Look at Genesis 6. Now watch this. Genesis chapter number 6. Now, now watch your Bible. Genesis chapter 6, look at verse 1. Genesis chapter 6, verse 1, the Bible says, And it came to pass, when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters were born unto them. All right? Verse 2, watch now, watch it, that the sons of God saw the daughters of men. Now listen to me, look up here at me, look up here at me. Adam was a son of God, right? Was Seth a son of God? He wasn't a son of God, was he? So whoever this is in verse 2, we know this much about them. They're sons of God. The Bible says in verse 2, look at it, that the sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were fair, and they took them wives of all which they chose. Amen? Now, now look, look, folks, look up here. He said sons of God. And here's what they did. 
Everybody with me? They mingled with the daughters of men. Everybody see that? Okay, now look. If that's not Seth, we, I just proved to you it's not Seth. Did I? So it's not Seth, okay? It's not Christians today because it's salvation. You become a son of God, right? So who, 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 is it, who is it? It only leaves you one option. Look up here, my good eye. What are you going to do with that? I don't care how you spin it, how you read it. If you use scripture with scripture, are you listening to me? No matter how you stack it up, that is, those sons of God are not from the godly line of Seth. I, listen, I realize that breaks up your theology. But what we're talking about is what God says. Now, who are you going to trust? What God says or what Dr. Tinkling Brass says? Or J. Flavius Fluffyhead? We got to make our mind up. Amen? So the only option you got here is in verse number two is that the sons of God are angels. Fallen angels. That, that mingled with the daughters of men. I'm going to prove that to you as well. Look at it, verse 3. The Bible says in verse number 3, And the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with man, for that he also is flesh, yet his day shall be 120 years. That, watch, verse 4, watch it. There were giants in the earth in those days. And also after that, after, what do you mean after that? Look at, verse, look at that. When the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men and they bare children to them, the same which became mighty men which were of old men of renown. Everybody see that? Amen? So, all right, look, one more time. So we know it's not Adam. Whoever the sons of God is, it's not Adam. We know it's not Seth. Right? All right? And uh, uh, we know it's not us. Everybody all right? Now, now listen to me, folks. Can I make a statement? Is everybody all right? You look sad, bro. Is your wife mad at you? <laughs> let, let, let me, can I help you folks? Let's just say, let's just say, uh, one of you in here, I'm not going to call names, don't worry. One of you decide, you know, I'll just marry her, then I'll change her. You're saved, she's not saved. You're going you to marry her, and you're going to straighten her out after you get married. I, I got a lady in my church that you ought to go talk to her and see how that's working out for her. Yeah. Amen? Now, look, can I help you? Everybody all right? If, uh, if you decide, I'm just going to marry her, and, you know, the power of God will change her, bless God. Okay. But now you have a believer yoking up with a non-believer. Everybody with me? But I don't care how you stack it up, folks. It still will not produce 16-foot giants. Believers and non-believers yoke up all the time. But they do not produce giants in the earth. What produces giants in the earth are the sons of God, angels, marrying, mingling 
with the daughters of men. Is everybody all right? I, I mean, I could just take 10 minutes and preach hard right now and beat that thing home, but I don't think you got it. Okay, so, so I don't know if you realize this or not. Do you realize that this subject, just the subject, who are the sons of God in Genesis chapter 6 has caused more controversy, more splits among Christians when all they had to do was just read their Bible and see what God says. And once you know what God says, it don't matter who believes what. All that matters is what did God say. And I have started from Daniel chapter 2. And I have showed you what it means to mingle. I have proven to you who the sons of God are. I have proven to you who they're not. Amen. And I have shown you by, by the grace of God and the power of his word in no uncertain terms, I don't care how you add it up, the sons of God in Genesis chapter 6 are angels. And, and you can do what you want to with it, folks. You know, that's like somebody ran up to me here a while back and said, here's what they said to me on the street, preaching on the street. Here's what they said. I hope you know you're going to go to hell. Bible says you're going to go to hell for telling people they're going to hell. <laughs> I said, well, young lady, can I get that chapter and verse on that, please? <laughs> well, it does. Okay, here's my Bible, use mine. I ain't got time for that, but it does. You see, you see how, how foolish people are. You know, you know, can I tell you something, folks? One of the greatest desires that we have as humans is, is to make God line up with what we believe. Can I help you? Can I tell you something? It ain't going to happen. God said, God said, you either come to him on his terms or you ain't coming. And that's just the way it is, folks. And uh, by the way, I love you. And, uh, and I'm just giving you the word of God. I'm not, I'm not, I ain't said nothing what I believe. I, who cares what I believe? All that matters is what does God say? Amen? Because here's what I can guarantee you. One of these days, you're going to be judged. Not for your sins if you're saved. That's done. That's dealt with at Calvary, nailed to the cross. But one of these days, you're going to face God. Amen? And you're going to have to answer to God for whether or not you believed him and his word. Everybody with me? All right, Father, we love you this morning. Thank you, Lord, for your precious word. Thank you, Lord, for the word of God that can, if we would just take the time to read it, rightly divide it. Lord, we clear up so many, many things in our life. I, I think, Lord, I, I believe in my heart that this is a judgment of God that many are deceived because they, they simply won't believe your word. I, I, I don't think there's a, many here like that, Lord, but I pray for this country. I, I beg you. God, may we have a revival again of, of coming back to your word and believing what you tell us in your word. It's pure, it's right, it's holy. And God, I know it's perfect. And so now, Lord, take it. And, and rest it in the hearts of people. Just, just lay it in their hearts. And they'll always have it. Trust it. Tremble when they approach it. And we'll thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right, preacher.